I just upgraded my workbench light from uh, three of these 13 watt uh, T5 fixtures, which cost me 9 euros at Lidl, to about 160 watts worth of T5 fixtures, going from about uh, 2,500 lumen to about 14,000 lumen. And uh, to celebrate this rather useful upgrade, I figured we'd take one of my old lights apart, because I really am quite curious to find out what makes a 9 euro T5 fixture, with electronic control of course, work. Given their less than expensive nature, I actually think these uh, Olivano Lux fixtures are pretty nice. They have this uh, tilting feature to them, which uh, goes all the way around, so you can shine them up in the ceiling if you want to. And uh, they come included with a relatively decent uh, cold white tube. We also have this uh, actual glass cover in front, which uh, does a very good job, an impressively good job at uh, actually dispersing the light a bit, giving them a bit of a softer feel. The glass has a kind of a square ish texture to it, it's little squares running up and down. And. Uh, it really does a nice job, it's a very nice feature for such a cheap light. The tube is just mounted as all of this eye to just a twist lock, which is giving me a headache. There we go, the included tube is uh, Brillona Lichten G950 40 Imkissen 2D59929 Brillon. Okay, oh, there we go. It's apparently an FSL brand, T5 13 watts at 840, so it's going to be 13 watts at uh, 4000K. And now I do not know what the CRI rating for these was, but uh, it wasn't very high. I would wager something like 60 probably. Uh, taking pictures with my DSLR, it really showed some rather interesting colour features. Inside of a tube holder, though, there doesn't seem to be too much interesting going on with these uh, Livano Lux ones. They don't have a proper reflector, it's just a white, white painted metal surface. Although the uh, actual uh, tube sockets seem to be of relatively high quality, with uh, actually really high quality looking copper contacts in there. There's a bit of a close-up on the actual contacts, and they are certainly looking to be quite pure copper, and uh, they actually seem to have two independent pieces of metal in there to provide even better contact, so that actually looks to be really good quality. Moving on, there isn't any super obvious way of getting these apart. These uh, plastic end caps seem to be just kind of wedged in there, but uh, if you actually flip that out, you do get a couple of screws, so we'll try undoing those. Alright, screws are out, is this going to come apart? Well, it's certainly loose now, but uh, it's not coming apart. Ah, there we go. These plastic ends just pop off, and it seems you really do need to undo those screws because the entire assembly seems to just kind of, yeah, pop off. Ah, uh, there we can see the cable rating for the rotating assembly. And that actually looks like a relatively decent construction. The cables don't seem to pinch and they have plenty of space to move around inside of the plastic end cap, so I'm actually very positively surprised by that, although the quality of the cable seems to be a bit on the weak side. They are quite hard, plasticky feeling. They are not, definitely not a rubber cable, so uh, how, how long that's going to last is a bit of a mystery, but really, even with the, the cables being made out of plastic, this actually looks way better than I expected. Oh, there, there are parts coming out now. 
Yeah, now we've got to a couple of small screws there holding the inner plastic end cap onto the metal assembly. So we'll just undo those. This screw seems to be slightly longer than the other one, so I shouldn't mix those up. And now that's you know everything's coming apart. That's a flat out of a way. And uh, that's probably a driver in there somewhere. But undo the other ends too. Okay. So one of these ends has obviously been attached after they installed the ballast, which is going to be in there somewhere. Yep, if we look real closely, we can just about make out the contour of a ballast just uh, shoved in there somewhere. So in order to get the ballast out, I think we need to pop out this switch, because these only affect uh, the single light, the switches don't affect the light further down in the data chain. So if we can just get this... There we go, single pole switch. This goes straight into the power inlet and straight onto ballast. So we're going to have to snip probably there and there. This is all uh, really nice, tidy and shrink wrapped. But uh, you wouldn't expect anything other than a quality product since these are sold in Europe and uh, Lidl would get uh, absolutely raped if they were to get caught selling unsafe products. And we'll just uh, snip that, snip that, and that, and that as well. Just resolve the base and reassemble it, and uh, this should for the most part pop out. Except that we also need to snip here in order to get the other end character off. And we should just uh, pull out the end like so. And that's our ballast right there. And we're left with an empty metal tube. Nothing too exciting left there. That leaves us with one electronic ballast model WLB2023 13W made for 22240, not universal voltage, 50 hertz 13 watts, made by Sheng Yu Bright Lighting Electric Appliance Company Limited, Liangshu Town, Sheng Yu City, Zhejiang Province, People's Republic of China. So, let's see what uh, components they've managed to source in uh, Shanjie City. And uh, on, on the inside we have what looks to be a actually really decent quality ballast. It's got an inline filter capacitor, it's got a proper fuse and even a filter inductor. And another filter cap there, before it's rectified in a, what's that, 3.3 microfarad electrolytic. Drawn through a few just basic uh, NPN transistors, and it's driving a couple of filtering coils and a cap coupling everything out to the tubes. And the soldering quality of this board actually looks to be of excellent quality. The, I mean, look at that shine. I'm really impressed by this. Although you can't have everything because the primary caps are GRP brand and the secondary caps are not Rubicons but rather Rupicons. Whatever it is, it's not a genuine Rubicon logo sitting there. Curious detail on the board, it's actually labelled W2023A21 watt. Even though the 8 side of the armature is labelled 2023 
13 watts. Hmm. They're, they're definitely using the same PCB for a larger model, although you have to question what the difference are, are supposed to be. Because there doesn't seem to be any obvious uh, hot swappable, so to speak, components which would uh, make up the difference between the two models. So they probably just to make production runs with one model and then they switch the components in the pick and place machine and make the other one. Oh, and I almost forgot uh, the model of this is either a Livano Lux energy saving under cabinet light or it's a, a Livano Lux uh, type 141021060L. These are sold by Lidl sometimes. I'm not entirely certain whether or not you can actually properly sort them anywhere else. So there you go, that's a quick and dirty teardown of a 9 euro T5 13 watts armature. And uh, I must say that I'm quite pleasantly surprised by it. Aside from the shoddy electrolytics on this board, it really seems to be a very high quality 13 watt T5 driver. I'm quite happy about my purchase actually. I can't spot any obvious weak spots on them, except for the caps, so I think these are going to last a pretty long time, so I'm probably going to spread them out across the house now. But I've got my better, stronger 160 watts worth of bench lighting. So, thank you for watching, I hope you found it enlightening. Cheerio!